Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is, here is, here is chapter 11 of Chance Ball, and this one is titled Fight. The rest of the weekend was spent alternating between crying and reading over all the texts that you two had sent to each other over the past few months, sporadically stalking through his Instagram, fearing that he'd found another girl, and that's why he'd dumped you. At the end of the weekend, on Sunday night, Darby posted something on his page. Goodbyes are never easy, like passing a frickin' gallstone. What does that even mean? Is he talking about me? Does he still want me? You thought desperately. You dared to hope that he was already regretting his rash decision, and you wondered if you should text him. You didn't want to be that stage 5 clinger, but you also didn't want to miss an opportunity to get back together, so you opened a message to him and started writing. You wrote several messages, in fact, only to delete the same message every time, without sending. As you typed, you prayed that he would come online and see your text bubble popping up and be the first to contact you, but no luck. Sunday night you tossed and turned, something just didn't feel right. Was it just because you wanted him back or was there actually a gut feeling that something was off? At 11pm you couldn't take it anymore and almost without thinking you threw a jumper on and snuck out of the house, your legs carrying you in the direction of Darby's place. What the hell am I doing? Is he going to be pissed that I've turned up at his house? Is it even a good idea? Am I being a stalker? You kept going and rounded the corner to his street. Your heart leapt in your throat when you saw the lights on in his house. <gasps> He's still awake. You thought with a mix of relief and apprehension as your feet pounded the pavement. As you ran, you heard a bang, clearly a good 200 metres from his house, and your running steps checked slightly at the loud noise. Wait, did that bang come from his house? As you got closer, you could hear a gruff male voice yelling, almost as if the owner of the voice was possessed. Who is that? You wondered with worried curiosity. You hadn't met Darby's parents before, but you were pretty sure his father was no longer in the picture, simply because he never spoke about him, but it was almost as if he refused to talk about him. Panting furiously, you reached Darby's front gate. It was broken off its hinges. Oh, crap. You thought as your heart sank. Something's wrong. You grabbed your phone from your pocket and ducked back behind the wall, ringing the police. When the first response team member answered, you gave the address and what you'd heard and seen and promised them that you'd stay put until they arrived. You lied. The minute you hung up the phone, you crouched and ran to the front door, slipping quietly inside. There was a middle-aged lady with silver grey hair lying mo motionless on the kitchen floor and you hunched over and ran to her side. She'd been hit across the forehead with a sharp object and was bleeding profusely. You dropped to your knees and whispered to her, aiming to see if she would respond to your voice, but she didn't move. You did note, however, that she was breathing. As calmly as possible, you looked around for something to stem the bleeding with, and spying a tea towel on the rack, you grabbed it and placed it lightly on the gash wound before lifting her head slightly to bring the end of the towel around under her head and tie it off to the side. From elsewhere in the house, you could hear a terrifying voice bellowing threats and expletives. Your heart was pounding so strongly you couldn't breathe, your hands shaking violently as you worked to tie the towel around the lady's head. Just then you heard Darby's voice. He yelled. It was a yell of pain. Before you could process what your body was doing, you jumped up and ran in the direction of his cry. Darby! You screamed as you ran. From wherever he was in the house, he heard your voice and panicked. No! No, Yin! Don't come! Run! You heard a loud thump and another cry from Darby. Blinded by desperation, you made your way towards the sound of violence and had almost reached Darby's room when a giant male figure came out through his door towards you. Who the hell are you? The livid male hollered. You recoiled in terror. This man was very intimidating. He was an extremely tall, extremely well-built man with anger etched onto his face. Where, 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 where's Darby? You whimpered, controlling your tears as best you could by blinking furiously as the lump in your throat tightened. The male lunged for you and you jumped away with a shriek of terror. Yin! Darby called from the doorway of his room. He was covered in blood. Darby! He yelled back, trying to get a good look at him from around this angry man's form. Don't you dare lay a finger on her, you asshole! Darby shouted at the male. The mountain of irate human turned and stalked back towards Darby, who did his best to straighten and square up. It was evident that this abusive person had been attacking Darby for a while now, and his strength had waned significantly. Your man tried to lunge at the male, who sidestepped him easily and punched him hard in the temple as the volleyball captain passed him by. Darby spun off course and collapsed, while the larger male laid into him, punching him mercilessly while he was on the floor. You screamed. In a fit of rage, you threw your body weight against the man and tried to push him off Darby. The man then turned on you and threw you, bodily, across the hall, your back and head smacking against the wall. You cried out, your call of pain bringing Darby back to life. I'll kill you! Darby snarled at the male, pulling himself up and flinging himself at his and your assailant. There was a struggle for a bit, and to your surprise, Darby managed to get the upper hand. 
You picked yourself up and ran over to help. Almost as if it were orchestrated, the police arrived at that very moment and entered the house, ending the fight immediately. Everyone who was still conscious ended up being handcuffed until the police could figure out what was going on. A quick background check revealed that the angry man who had appeared and attacked Darby, and as it turned out his mother as well, was NG Todoroki, Darby's biological father. NG was quickly escorted from the house and into the back of the waiting police van while you and Darby sat with your backs up against the hallway wall, a good few metres between the two of you. Oh, how you craved to be closer to him. The police talked openly about Engie's abuse of Darby in front of you, and you couldn't help but throw pitiful glances towards your man who had his head hung low. He was battered and bruised, and your heart ached to see him in this state. He'll be going straight back to jail then, one police officer said. Darby, who had been deathly silent up until this point, lifted his head. Does that mean I don't have to go undercover now? He asked. Yeah, you're safe for now. This guy won't be back ever again, the officer said. Darby looked over at you, and you gave him a confused smile. He opened his mouth to say something, but was cut off before he could get his words out. Okay, you two. Let's get you checked over. The paramedics are here, another officer said, helping you stand and taking you out of the cuffs. You rubbed your wrists and thanked him, watching as he walked to Darby to help him stand. You saw your man, your handsome ex, wince as the officer undid the cuffs, and all you really wanted to do was go to him and hold him, but you refrained. We're not a couple anymore. Darby limped to the ambulance with the help of the officer and you followed meekly behind him as you all made your way outside. The paramedics checked Darby over and noted that he had some pretty heavy bruising and bad cuts but they were sure nothing was broken. But to be on the safe side they thought that they'd take him in anyway and you watched helplessly as they loaded Darby and his mother into the back of the ambulance and drove away. Darby never looked back. Are we still over? You thought sadly, a tear rolling down your cheek. The police dropped you back home and you quietly let yourself back inside the house. It was close to 3.30am now and you were shot physically and mentally. You dragged yourself up to your room and collapsed onto the bed, falling asleep immediately. The next morning you were supposed to go to school but you skipped it to go and see Darby. You had to see him again. You couldn't shake the feeling that something had changed and there might be a chance you'd get back together. His question to the police kept repeating in your mind. Does that mean I don't have to go undercover now? What the heck did that even mean? You desperately wanted to find out. You got to the hospital and asked for Darby Todoroki. The receptionist gave you the level and room number and you sped walked your way there. Oh God, what am I doing? Am I just being annoying right now? You thought as your eyes scanned the room numbers along the hospital corridor. You took a deep breath in at the entrance of his room and knocked softly. Yeah, came his familiar rich voice. Hey, you said flatly as you rounded the corner. He eyed you. What are you doing here? He asked in an almost annoyed tone. Your heart sank. You'd kind of been hoping for a better, happier response. Tabi, I... Yin, I think you should go, he said bluntly, looking away and balling up his fists. You were deeply hurt by his cold response and all your emotions bubbled up inside you. The least you could do is thank me for my concern, you said, your voice shaking with emotion as a single tear slid down your cheek. This is none of your concern, he spat, turning his head back to look at you. What were you even doing at my house last night? He could have... He could have killed you. Who cares if he'd killed me? I don't want to live like this anyway! You screamed, hot angry tears flooding down your face. You stood a second too long staring into Darby's gorgeous turquoise eyes before turning and running out of the door. You tore out of the hospital and ran for the bus. Stupid, stupid, stupid idiot. Now he really, really hates you. All you've done is made things worse! You screamed at yourself, thoroughly pissed at your own actions. Where to freaking go, Yin? You cried most of the bus ride home, not caring about the people around you. Most of them just looked away anyway. Once you got home, you threw yourself into bed again, sulking and cursing at yourself. Back at the hospital, Doc's officers had arrived to update Darby on the situation. He's going to be behind bars for good now, so we don't need to relocate you. You can live a normal life without fear, one of the officers said kindly with a smile. Are you sure? Because I don't want to mend broken relationships, just have to break them apart again. Darby said dubiously. The officer shook his head. We promise he will never get out again. He's proven that he cannot be trusted and will make sure that that gets thoroughly discussed in court. Darby just nodded and looked down at his hands. How's my mum? He asked them. She's going to be okay, the lady officer replied. She'll be in for a few more weeks though. She's got pretty bad concussion. Yeah, Darby said. I saw what happened. The officers fell into an awkward silence and then excused themselves, wishing Darby a speedy recovery as they left. The room was quiet once more and he was left with his own thoughts. Yin, 
What do I do about Yin? He thought with a groan as he let his head fall into his hands. I shouldn't have been so cold. It's just hard to be vulnerable. Would she even want to get back with me after all this? I don't even know how to approach her. I know I've heard her. He reached for his phone and opened messages to you, typing a message but then deleting it soon after and clicking out of messages. He was about to put his phone down when it dinged. Yin. He thought was surprised when he saw the message was from you. He opened the message. All it said was, yeah. He smirked. She must have been watching my text bubbles. He thought, feeling encouraged. Hey, um, can we talk once I get out of hospital? He asked, hitting send once he had typed the message. Yep, he replied bluntly. Cool. He sent back before putting his phone down. He sighed deeply. <sighs> Don't want to open up about my past though. That's what's holding me back the most. It's just angst and randomness. I do apologise. I don't even know what this book is. Uh, there ends chapter 11. Stay tuned for chapter 12 coming tomorrow.